The next topic is Ray RLLib. It is distributed and it can train deep RL algorithms on CPU. Hundreds and tens and thousands of agents simultaneously on using your CPU. It also can use GPU. Core components of Ray RLLib are actually the same logic components that uh, usually RL has. You're already familiar with environment and uh, Ray RLLib has a rich library of built-in environments. Environment is where you pass your actions and it returns you a new state and a reward. Then there are algorithms. And again, RayRalib has a rich library of built-in algorithms. So you will not have to uh, implement PPO, DQN, and DDPG, A3C, and neither of algorithms. You will not implement, you will just use them as a plugin and uh, implement a configuration for each algorithm. But keep in mind that environment is an API class, an algorithm is API class, and a policy is another API class there. The policy is something that you usually train. The policy takes state S and returns action that is later passed to environment. RayRalib never trains one agent. It always trains a set of agents. Each of the agents builds a trajectory of state actions and rewards, and they are captured in another class, which is called trajectories. Let's go through all the components of RayRalib. First is environment. Environment consists of all possible actions called action space, a complete description of the environment, the all possible states, where the agent could reside in, it's called state space. Uh, an observation by the agent of certain parts of the states, uh, it's called observation space. A reward, which is the feedback for a particular action of agent. A reward is usually either implemented as a set of uh, rules by developer or is fitted by another neural network. Such a group of algorithms is called actor critic, where actor does actions and critic evaluates the actions and approximating their rewards. So there are two neural networks. Actor approximates optimal policy. Critic approximates optimal reward. As a result, you're getting the model that tries to maximize the expected sum of all future reward, and it is called a policy. The policy is a function yeah, that uh, maps the environment observation to an action. Here is a simple formula for policy. Policy is a function that takes in a state at some time step t and returns an action at the same time step t. The learning within Ray RLib happens in the following pattern. There is an agent. The agent takes action due to the policy and passes them to the algorithm. Algorithm tries to optimize uh, the policy by maximization of the reward. Uh, so the algorithm object is traveling across the policy surface. The same optimization you do with uh, SGD and other algorithms. The workers are the copies of algorithms. Sometimes they have different hyperparameters, sometimes the same. They build trajectories. Rarely is a framework of distributed learning. Distributed means in parallel. So there are many agents that are training simultaneously. And this loop repeats until the optimal policy is achieved. Besides that, actions are committed to environment. And as environment returns us observation and reward, these tuple of action, observation, reward, and the status uh, was the episode completed or not. So is it, it's a tuple of one, two, three, four entries in the next state. Uh, it is written into a, a replay buffer. It's easy to set up a replay buffer in Ray Redlib. It's a parameter. I want this kind of replay buffer, and that's it. If you would work with this kind of algorithm from scratch, you will be forced to implement everything by hand. Next, this is an example of the code how you use Ray RLib. This is the training of one of the algorithms. Here we create a RLib trainer. Everything starts from it. See, we just use the built-in PPO algorithm. We haven't implemented anything. We just instantiated the PPO algorithm and we passed a configuration. Earlier, we created a configuration. The configuration is a class. It's just a JSON. See, it has the same structure as a JSON. 
and it has the following entries. First is a type of environment. And as you noticed and remember from the our gym environment lecture, there are names for built-in environments. And here we use the built-in environment. Then we tell how much parallel threads we will use for training. See, number of workers is how much virtual CPUs we will use for this task. Then we can use a PyTorch, TensorFlow, or other framework for coding, which is more familiar to you. And here we pass the hyperparameters of the model. How many hidden layers there will be? Number of entries will decide how many hidden layers there will be and the values of each entry, like 64, 128, will decide how much neurons there are in every layer. And also we have activation here. We can pass activation as a one value, then all neurons will have the same activation. Uh, otherwise, we can pass array or a list of activations, for one activation per one layer. Then set how much evaluation workers will be. So these are training workers and these are evaluation workers. And usually we split the data into train and evolve. And here we can render or not the evaluation config. The evaluation config will look like this. See, it will be rendered and you will see what were the consequences of the trained policy of your agent. Then we have our model with a proper setup that we described here. And we train it for a number of epochs or episodes. Algo.train. That's it. Super simple. And then we evaluate it after the training. And then you will see how AI player plays a cell game.